recording. Good. Okay. So I'm going to give a talk called uh, Ericksonian Responses to Cancer. Stand by. Now this is recording. Okay. Don't touch anything. <laughs> okay. And, and every sound will be recorded. So anyway. So I'm going to give it. Oh. <laughs> and um, for the, la the last seven years uh, in my medical history and personal history have been biblically um, difficult. Uh, I had endocarditis, emergency surgery on the femoral artery, um, a big ileocecal infection inside, and um, Remember if there are other things. And oh, and then in the end of January, is diagnosed with prostate cancer. And both of my parents died during this time uh, period as well. Mm. Um, so I thought it was a good time to talk about this stuff and how one deals with these, uh, you know, complex miseries. And. A few years ago, I read a book called Remarkable Recoveries, which is a series of uh, narratives <clears throat> by people who have had desperate diseases and circumstances, and how they recovered against the statistical odds, or even against their own expectations. And um, what I took from the book was two things. Um, everyone recovered in his or her own way. Some people took a completely allopathic, traditional medicine approach to their illnesses. Some people threw that overboard and did all alternative treatments. Some threw away all treatment and changed their lives entirely and went to the South Pacific. Other people changed their lives in different ways alongside the medical treatment. So one thing that was, seemed to me true that, was that the people who did well decided on their own path. And that could be with, you know, the chief physician at Stanford or some uh, faith healer in Guadalajara, it didn't matter. Second thing that struck me was that each person who survived and, and did well in, in these circumstances had um, one person who did not give up on them, no matter whether they gave up on themselves. Yeah. It could be a sister, a wife, a husband, a friend, a, a physician, a nurse, hospice worker. So, I want to first talk about two cases that, uh, of people who saw me who had cancer, and then about my own treatment, and, uh, and uh, it's, it's sequelae. I looked back in my records and I saw, this is after the cancer treatment, which in my case was completed in May, so I had, I was treated from sort of beginning of March to the middle of May. I looked back and I saw that for the first and only time in, in the 35 years I practiced, my practice had seven cancer patients, a man and six women, ages from late 40s to 80 all of whom came in, in in pretty much in the last seven years. Never before, and even though granted I'm older, so my patients are older, um, I, I realized that I, I was starting to learn a lot about this stuff uh, di very directly. And what I discovered as I had read was that each person who survived did it differently. So right now, uh, six of the seven are still alive and doing very, very well. I'm going to tell you about the seventh one, and then one of the others who uh, is still alive and doing well. Um, just to show you the contrast between styles of dealing with the illness. 